Hello and welcome back to this quick video on my first attempt of making the new pigment Yin Min Blue. First a bit of history on the discovery of blue pigments. There actually are less inorganic blue pigments than you might think. In general, for a pigment to be useful, it has to be durable and long lasting under various conditions such as heat. Other properties such as light fastness, toxicity and the actual color also contribute to whether a pigment can establish itself in industry. One of the earliest known blue pigments was Egyptian blue, which was created around 2500 BCE by heating a mixture of copper, sand and calcium carbonate to between 800 and 1000 degrees Celsius. During the Middle Ages, the production of blue pigments became more sophisticated and new pigments were developed. One such pigment was ultramarine blue, which was made by grinding lapis lazuli into a fine powder and then washing it with water to remove impurities. The dark blue color stems from a sodium calcium aluminosilicate with extra sulfur ions embedded in its cubic crystal structure. In the 18th century, a new blue pigment was discovered by accident. Prussian blue was created when a laboratory assistant in Berlin spilled a mixture of iron sulfate and potassium ferrocyanate on a laboratory bench. The resulting pigment was a deep blue that was quickly adopted by artists and became popular in the production of prints and paintings. In the 19th century, chemists began to experiment with new blue pigments. One of the most important of these was cobalt blue, which is created by sintering cobalt oxide and alumina. It quickly became popular due to its vibrant color and durability. But today it's gradually phased out due to the concern of possible cobalt poisoning and it being a suspected carcinogen. For the last 200 years, blue pigments based on alumina, copper, cobalt and iron were all humanity had to offer. But in 2009, Master Bramian and his then graduate student Andrew Smith at Oregon State University discovered a new blue pigment while they tried creating new materials for electronics application. They heated a mixture of yttrium indium oxide and yttrium manganese oxide at 1100 degrees Celsius and the resulting compound was a vibrant blue color. Today the pigment is sold by Golden Paints which source the pigment from the Shepard Color Company. Yin Min Blue's color arises from trivalent manganese ions which are bound in a trigonal bipyramidal crystal structure. This is quite unique, since the usual color of trivalent manganese is red. Other typical colors of manganese include pink when the oxidation state is plus 2, plus 4 is brown, plus 5 is blue, plus 6 green and everybody knows plus 7 is the deep violet permanganate ion. Yin Min Blue also has outstanding resistance against heat and acidic conditions, which other blue pigments struggle with. Also the very low toxicity and near perfect spectral blue attribute to its usefulness. Another noteworthy property includes its extremely high infrared reflectance. For this reason AMD is using it to improve energy efficiency in some high-end GPUs since 2016. Now finally, here is my attempt at creating Yin Min Blue myself. I decided to go with what Wikipedia says is the most blue stoichiometry of 1 mole yttrium, 0.8 moles indium and 0.2 moles manganese. First I weighed a sample of indium metal to calculate the amount of my other ingredients. For 3 grams of indium I had to weigh out 3.5 grams of yttrium oxide and 570 milligrams of manganese dioxide. The manganese dioxide came from a zinc carbon battery which is the worst grade you can find in the amateur lab. Unfortunately, I didn't have anything purer on hand. 
I then dissolved all the indium metal in nitric acid and added it to a crucible with the other two oxides. The crucible was made of nickel, which in hindsight wasn't such a good idea, since it probably contaminated the pigment. I then heated it with a Bunsen burner until the leftover acid was gone and the indium nitrate converted to the oxide. I kind of got ahead of myself by trying to sinter the powder right there in the crucible with the burner for half an hour, which obviously didn't work. It probably also made the nickel contamination much worse. So after I let it sit around for a few weeks, I finally got around and put it in a real furnace. First one hour at 1000 degrees Celsius and then five more at 1100 degrees. In between that I took it out and grinded it up some more. After letting it cool down, it looked like this. Not exactly vibrant, but rather dark with a bluish hue. Here you can also see I tried putting it in some clear paint, but the color vanished. It just looked black. I decided to try again and this time use some cleaner manganese dioxide. First I tried precipitating manganese carbonate from a sulfate solution. But while filtering I realized I couldn't be sure how much residual crystal water it would have after drying. Therefore it's impossible for me to weigh it and get an exact stoichiometry. So I switched to weighing out a calculated amount of potassium permanganate and firmly decomposed it. As you can see the powder started jumping around as oxygen gas was evolved. The yielding manganese dioxide was washed and filtered to get rid of the potassium oxide and residual permanganate. I then again dissolved the indium in nitric acid and added it to the crucible. This time I used a ceramic one for everything. I also added the yttrium oxide directly into the manganese and indium sludge and let it dry in an oven. The next day I put it in the furnace at 1100 degrees and after an hour it looked like this. Already a promising hint of blue, but since the sludge settled slowly while drying it density separated and wasn't mixed since then. So I grinded it up thoroughly and put it back in the oven for three more hours. And out came, finally, a bright blue powder. So it works. Even with still impure chemicals and a less than perfect process, you can make Yinmin blue at home. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.